is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 2nd, the magical, magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial, then we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, a mixed bag out here, slightly mixed. That mix coming from the semis, which are up 15 points, about a half a percent. Otherwise, all the other U.S. indices trading the downside. Dow's off 173, S&P 24, NASDAQ 24, Russell 7, Tranny's 106. Gold's off 47 bucks, silver's down 50 cents, light sweet crude is flat, natural gas up 19 cents, big move there. That's up 2 and 7 tenths percent. 30 year treasury down uh, 1 point and 20 ticks. 139.02 is the print there. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. We've got a beer company, it's Boston Beer, up 14 bucks, nearly 4%. Align Technologies, 13 bucks, 4%. EPAM Systems, about 14 bucks and 5%. Shopify, $10, 2.5%. Broadcom is up 2% or about 12 bucks. So the downside is Amazon. Off $81, 3%. Booking Holdings, 64 nearly 3%. Chipotle, 32 2%. Equinix, 21 bucks, 3%. Vertex Pharmaceuticals down about 6%, nearly 16 bucks to the downside. So where do we want to begin? Where we're going to begin is with the ES Mini. And the reason is, is because we have the ES Mini. Let me uh, go ahead and change screens. We're going to kind of go back and forth here between screens so I can draw in patterns for you. But we're going to start here with our white background screens, our multi time frame. The reason we're starting with it is because we have the ES Mini right now. And by the way, I misspoke earlier. I'd given out the figure of 4092.75, I believe was the number I'd given out. It's uh, And that's because I had my, I forgot, I had my synthetic version of the uh, contract up on the screen. So we're trading the June contract. The actual swing point low is 4094.25. On that level, now that was also a TD9 count bottom. You can see that uh, right here where my cursor is at. So that's a, a really important bottom. Nice bullish piercing candle. So prices, and it's testing this swing point area on lighter volume. I'm going to presume through the end of the day it's going to be lighter volume. Now, if price rejects, that means close about 4094.25. That could signal a bottom, and it could signal a move up into the top or the bottom of its daily profile at about the 4174 area. Could be the oscillator and change line around the 4250-ish range out there but if we're going to see a bottom here and the reason why we're looking at this chart is typically when you get back to an area of support or you have a bottoming signal on a daily time frame you'll see some type of bottoming signals on the intraday chart so the question is do we see that so let's go ahead and reduce this down here and if we begin by taking a look at 30 minute chart there's a road's momentum indicator signal that's present but you would need a bullish reversal candle to complete by 130. I don't know if we're going to get that. At 110, it doesn't look like that. But let's see what the next 20 minutes bring. Uh, maybe it's not a bullish reversal candle that uh, takes place between 1 and 130. Maybe it's between 130 and 2 or 2 and 230. But as long as Rhodes momentum indicator signal has been triggered, you want to watch for that. If you get a bullish reversal candle, it tells you at least for the 30-minute time frame, we've got a short-term bottoming pattern. 
do we have anything for the 60 minute? Well, it's really the same iteration there. It has a Rhodes Mint indicator signal that says by two o'clock, if you get a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a bottom. You would then be taking a look at price getting up to 41.31 and then about the 41.60 ish type area out there. No bottoming signal on the 120. Uh, potential set, set up on the 240, Rhodes Mintum indicator signal, but nothing yet. And really, that would be the same pattern. Uh, you could actually get a TD9 count pattern that would form overnight. Uh, on the 240-minute chart and on the five-hour time frame chart as well. So no bottom signals here. It would be the 30 and the 60 that we would be keeping an eye on. Now, what's also really key and for this week, so we're not seeing a significant, uh, let me just summarize it at this stage of the game. We're not seeing, even though we've got price coming back and testing a key level of support, we're not seeing the bottoming signals on the intraday charts to say, oh, okay, this is a no-brainer. It's going to be a test of rejection. This price is going to move higher. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. What I am saying is that we don't have the signals to suggest that, at least with regard to the 30, 60, 120, 240, and the five-hour time frame charts. <clears throat> okay, so now where do we go from here? This is where I want to go back to the uh, bigger picture, the black screen out here, and take a look at our multi-time, four time frames out here that we use. Uh, and these are the larger time frames. So and this is for the ES Mini as well. Just want to stay here. And the reason I want to stay here, you may have noticed, maybe you didn't notice, that's okay, I'll point it out to you right here. The swing point on the ES Mini, again, now this I'm using my synthetic contract. So the version, you can, if you look up at the, uh, in the uh, kind of the upper left area, you'll see a little squiggly line on ES1 and an exclamation point. All of you know that's not, a sig that's not a symbol that is out there. That is the Stevie synthetic symbol out here. And, uh, and the reason to use that is because I can then get profile levels. And the profile levels are very helpful because we, un we always want to understand where buyers and sellers exist for all different types of time frames. Well, here, because I've used that synthetic version, I've got a new quarterly profile that just formed. Uh, this quarter, it's bearish in structure. And I would say if all hell breaks loose out here, we should see the ES Mini get down to 35, 39. But before that happens, there's other patterns that we want to pay attention to. Uh, by the way, if you take a look at the ES Mini on a monthly time frame, it says we really, because we, we start closing below uh, the levels where we're trading right now, 3703. So we have downside targets of 35, 39, and 3703. Now, we take a look at the weekly time frame. We're going to see that price is trading below the bottom of its bullish hammer candle. That formed here on the uh, trading week that began February 21st. Now, that actually actual low is that 4094.25 area. I believe that's where, yeah, where that's at. But on this chart, you're looking at 4092.75. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. We get a close below the bottom of the hammer candle this week. It's only Monday. Doesn't matter where it closes today. It matters where it closes on Friday. Well, then you'd have an A to B equals CD to the downside to give you a price projection of 39.24. So right now, until we get a clear rejection of this area, odds favor price targeting the 3924 to 3703 area inside of the ES Mini. But we have to wait and see how this plays out. But that's a signal as we speak right now. Let's do really the same kind of a thing. We're going to go to a break here shortly, but do it with regard to the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, if it closes below the low from April the 26th, that is the uh, support level. That's at 128150. Well, that's, of course, using my synthetic version of the contract out here. I believe that still may be the same number. I'm pretty sure that it is, 128150. If we get a close below that, it will negate its buy the D-point pattern. That formed out here was a Three River Morning Star. That was the uh, trading sessions of April 26th, April 27th, and April 28th. So if we close below that, we negate that buy signal. We come back for this break. Let's go take a look at the NQ's shorter term time frame charts. See what kind of signals we need there. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So to summarize that first segment, we took a look at the ES Mini. We know the ES Mini is testing a key swing point, February 24th. It's doing it on lighter volume. A test rejection of that level uh, would suggest that, okay, if you can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside. Now, the bust on the upside says identify resistance levels up above. We did that. And now we're taking a look at the NQ. So the NQ has a completed A to B equals CD pattern. We talked about that. And uh, which chart, what screen are we looking at here? Uh, the white one. Okay. So 12A to 150. So even though whether I use my synthetic contract or I use the actual June contract, we've got the same price point that we're looking at there. So that's good. We're sitting right now at about 12 a to 150. We're just a couple points above that level. If we look at the intraday time periods out here, uh, you actually have a confirmed right now on a five hour time frame chart. Now, the, this this time, this bar does not complete until 2 p.m. But you can see the low and the high of the prior bar. Um, has been uh, has been exceeded, and that gives us a potential key reversal. I say potential because we have to close one tick above the open of this bar in order to get that key reversal bar. But we have that's what we have right now at one nineteen in the afternoon. Do we have that at two p.m.? Certainly, if it closes higher, we most certainly do. So you've got a bottom signal there. Nothing on the one twenty. Well, I take that back. Price is retesting a TD nine count bottom. That's at that twelve eight to one fifty level. So it's testing a bottom signal. 60 minute confirmed roads meant to indicator top. Now, the cool thing really about the 60 minute chart for the NQ is should this gain traction here uh, during the afternoon, key resistance is at 13.055. A uh, price got up there, rejected that level, so a close above 13.055, the NQ would generate a signal for you. 
that signal, price moving higher. Likewise, price, price closing below 12, 8, 1, 50 gives you a signal as well, and price is likely to head lower. Now, head lower to where? That's a great question. The head lower to where would be the bottom. It's not shown here. It's the bottom of its monthly profile, and that price point is 12, 5, 32. Now, it's a bullish structured profile. Price is trading within that range, so that's the reason to look for, anticipate, see if there's any kind of bottoming signals. That's what we're doing here as we speak right now. So the 60-minute bottom signal, the 30-minute bottom pattern and signal out here, 50 15 minute the same, the 10 minute the same, and I don't know about the five minute chart. I'm not going to worry about the five minute chart. So the NQ is giving us now. Now that's important with regard to the NQ um, trying to to bottom because if the markets are going to bottom out here, we need to see both the Nasdaq and the semiconductor index do it basically at about the same time, or at least both put in uh, bottom signals. I want to see if I have this one chart here. Yeah, so. This is actually the semiconductors at the uh, top by the SMH ETF. And, and I don't know why it is. I've got the S&P 500 versus the SPIs uh, down below up there. But if you take a look at those uh, blue vertical lines out there, you'll see how these bottoms line up with each other. So in the case of that, I've got the S&P, which we don't have a bottom signal here. But we most certainly do inside of the SMH. It's a three drive to a bottom pattern. You and I, we took, let me make sure I'm on the right screen. No, I'm not. Son of a gun. Okay, Mr. Bill was about ready to uh, whack me with a uh, board. So here's here's that here's that chart I was referring to now. At the top uh, panel, you've got the uh, SMHs, and to the bottom panel, you've got the S&P 500. And so if we go take a look at the SMHs, we looked at this last week, but I just want to make sure I cover this uh, with you because basically we've got – you know, the NASDAQ has, the NQs have got a bottoming pattern. The SMHs do as well. And that's really important for the market. It doesn't mean that the market won't, uh, that, that it can't fail. It's just that uh, the two most important signals have given us some bottoming patterns. So let me get the SMH up here. You'll see this momentarily, which is a three drive to a bottom pattern. Let me do this here, scrunch the chart just a tad. Now, this one's a perfect one. This one, this one is a textbook, a textbook three drive to a bottom. Drive number one that we begin with. Starts on the trading day of January 30 for up, uh, sorry, January 28th. Price moves all the way down. It creates a swing point on March the 14th. Well, that was 30 trading sessions. 30, tra 30 trading sessions later, as the uh, SMH were making a low on April 26th, was April 26th, April 27th, and April 28th that generated that three river morning star candle formation. Now, the SMHs, you've got a bullish structured profile that formed on Friday, and price is trading into the bottom of that profile, which is at 228.55. We've been down today as low as 228.86. So if you're an aggressive trader and you're looking to take a long position in the market, uh, then this would be a spot to do that. Now, this may only take you up to 245.03, the top of its daily profile out there. So it may just be a very short-term trade out there. Likewise, a close below 228.55, and you'd want to jettison the position out there. Now, I'd say you want to jettison the position. An aggressive trader wouldn't jettison the position right there. An aggressive trader would wait for the support of the Three River Morningstar pattern to fail. And that support level is at 225.80 out there. So the SMH is a clear bottom. The NQ has a bottom. But if it closes below 12.80150, then it's uh, trouble there in River City. And now let's go to another indice out here. And that other indice would be the, ah, uh, shoot. Yeah, it's the ah, uh, shoot indice out there. It's the Russell 2000. And I did not have those charts ready on my screen. Let me see here while those populate. I just went ahead and went ahead and hit the populate button anyways. I think it'll just take a moment. And so we're going to let this pop out. I'll change the screens. You'll see the white background screens out here as they're coming up. And what I want you to focus on is going to be the daily chart. It's going to be panel number two from the upper right. I'll, I'll just expand out the chart as soon as you get populated out here. And the reason why we're taking a look at this is because we know we got a valid bottom in the semis. We know we have a valid bottom in the NQ. And, and the Russell 2000 out here, let me get this chart. Well, that didn't help. There we go. What What is today going to be? Bar number eight of a TD9 count. So, uh, and we know that the TD9 count pattern, the low needs to occur if it's a bottom signal. Low needs to form on either bars eight, bar nine, or the bar following bar number nine. So today's eight. That says that we should see a bottom signal inside the Russell 2000 between today and Wednesday out there. So we'll want to watch for that. You'd want to go take a look at the intraday time periods. Well, we've got those time periods up here to see if there's some kind of bottom signal. 30-minute Nothing. Been negated. 
the uh, 60 minute, well, the bar doesn't complete for another 35 minutes, but as we speak right now, its bottoming signal has been negated. Same thing for the 120, same thing for the 240. And uh, you do have wave number seven that's establishing itself on the five hour time frame chart, but that's going to require a higher low before that pattern comes to completion out there. Hey, Steve, didn't the NQ already close below the TD nine count bottom on the one hour and two hour? So let's go back to uh, so so with regard to the Russell two thousand out here showing a bottom signal. The uh, intraday charts their their bottom signals have been negated, so they would need to form something new out there. But this is the areas that we want to be paying attention to out here until the daily bottoming signals actually fail. So there's a question here inside the Tigers, and I'm going to go put those NQ charts up there um, and uh, and answer the question. And it was uh, about the one-hour time frame. So let me open up the one-hour time frame. And uh, the question reads like this. Make sure I get it right. Then the NQ already closed below the TD9 count bottom. Um, so what I'm, and this is from MX32013. I like the 13. That's uh, I play my uh, golf game. I play I play uh, no, different numbered balls, but one of those numbers that I play is 13. The other number I'm not going to pronounce on the air or say what that is on the air it might uh, freak a few people out or something. But uh, but we we definitely know the balls that I hit. Which ones are mine? By the way, I was using 13 yesterday's first day back out on the course after a seven week layoff because of my uh, tennis elbow and. Uh, it was, a, uh, it was a very good day on the golf course. But uh, it will come back and answer this question. There's a Rosemont Dominicator bottom pattern out here, MX32013. That's the bottom pattern that's in place right now that we're talking about. We'll come back to this break. Make sure I answer this If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're answering the question on the two-hour and the one-hour chart. Did the uh, chart pattern negate a TD9 count? And the answer is uh, yes, it did. But those are the TD9 counts that go back to April the uh, 26th time frame. But even though those patterns were negated, there's other patterns that have formed out here. In the case of the 120-minute time frame chart, you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside that has uh, completed. And it completed when it generated that bull sash candle. So that's the pattern that's in place out here right now as we speak. And price is uh, right at that 12 A to 1 uh, type area out there. So, yes, the TD9 counts on the uh, intraday time periods did go ahead and uh, negate those signals, but there's other patterns that formed. And as I was alluding to before we went to the breakout here on the 60 minute time frame chart, it was a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that had uh, formed that bottom. And that was the one that took place at uh, 9, at 10 o'clock this morning on the hourly time frame chart. So now that's your new level of support. If that gets broken, meaning it closed below, not a test of, but that's at 12, 742.75, then that signal will get negated. So I hope that helps answer your question out there. And thanks for being another set of eyeballs for Stevie out here. Um, so thanks for that. Let me just check real quickly and uh, see if there's any questions. So there's only one question so far. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. And this one is coming from... Uh, from Mimi, and Mimi wants to take a look at uh, UNG again. Okay, um, and maybe it wasn't, uh, but that really means what we want to do is take a look at natural gas. So to do that, if uh, Mimi, if you give me a moment here, we'll, we'll look at natural gas and we'll look at the UNG, but we'll look at natural gas primarily. So I'm gonna get those charts started, but I believe we're, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the black background screens here. And what we'll go do is take a look at our natural gas contracts out here and uh, because i believe we were talking about on friday that this is going to be rolling over the ung is going to right now it's holding june but i and on friday there were no anticipated purchases but it's going to start uh and it had a bunch of cash so it's going to start adding a contract to that uh to that etf where is um, natural gas here we go so now we take a look at natural gas mimi this will be different or likely be different than the uh, UNG. What I want you to, to know is that on the June contract, and it's a nice move today, but all that move is doing is trading up into resistance, which is the top of the bearish structured daily profile. So the, now there's a sell the D point pattern. And so your resistance is the high from April 18th. That's at $8.19. That's really the next level that price would need to close above to give you a, a breakout mode. But right now, we have a sell the D point pattern. Price has been consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. And price has traded right up in resistance. Again, the top of that profile, 7.562. Today's high, 7.553. Now, go take a look at the white background chart to see if there's anything else out here that we can spot that would assist. By the way, on the weekly chart, you can also see there's resistance at $7.83. That is the top of a new weekly profile that is formed out there. But now we go back to the white background chart to see if there's anything else out here for me. I mean, then we'll finish it off by taking a look at the UNG. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame, you have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top and a TD9 count top. On the monthly chart, nothing. No kind of top says it wants to move higher. But that just kicks in the resistance levels that we were taking a look at. Nothing new on the daily time frame chart or any of the intraday charts that I see out here of significance to worry about. So you're just trading up into resistance. And I don't know whether we'll take that out or not. But now if we go take a look at the charts for UNG, and we can do this. Uh, just I'll stay here on UNG, and we'll do that eight panel a set of charts out here for it, just to see what kind of signals that UNG provides to us. So this is going to take just about uh, 20 seconds or so, I think, to uh, populate. While that's populating, let me uh, get back to a different screen and just see if there's anything that pops out to me. But but really, Mimi, what you want to do is really pay attention to the natural gas contract out here. But luckily for us, uh, UNG has a daily profile as well that it's trading into. And the top of that profile, now I think the the natural gas contract was a bearish structure profile. Is that correct? I, I just I think it was. But either way, resistance in UNG is the top of its daily profile. Now that happens to be at twenty five ninety nine. There's a new weekly profile that is also forming, and the top of that is at twenty six ninety. So that's going to be your resistance levels. But you can see even on the UNG weekly basis, TD nine count top out there. So you know that's the level that price needs to overcome. And there's a sell the D point pattern that formed out here. In fact, what you have is you have a uh, it's a pretty bearish pattern uh, for uh, UNG, but this is the reason why we really focus, because uh, we don't have the same pattern on the 
natural gas contract itself. But here, this has got an island top, right? So we got an island top out here inside of UNG. Extremely bearish pattern out there. And that still is in play as we speak right now. But if we go switch back, we take a look at natural gas for the day. Um, so I'm going to switch back to that. A moment to get there. And we'll just expand out the daily time frame chart. You see, no, 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 uh, no uh, uh, island top pattern out there. Yes, a top, um, but the type of top that is not as bearish speaking as just UNG. So that's the importance. Look, if you trade the spies, what I want you to do is I want you to be taking a look at the ES mini. I'm not saying you need to trade the futures. I'm saying you need to want you want to have access to it. You, if you're listening to this show, I, I'm sure you're looking for additional information. Which way are things going? Um, uh, there's a question about the GDX and gold uh, that someone wants me to take a look at, and we will uh, do that here momentarily. But the, 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 you're listening to the show, and hopefully what many of you are doing is watching these patterns or taking a look at these patterns or learning these patterns out here. And, uh, and you can easily do that. Just subscribe to Mastery and Probability for whatever the time period. But for the first 29 days, it's basically free, meaning you can get your money back. And, you know, if you time it with uh, your credit card, uh, cycle out there you know there's nothing that's put out um so mimi i hope that helps answer the question with regard to ung what it's doing where resistance levels are and then the underlying uh, contracts uh, that make up ung and how that's actually more important for us to be focused on and pay attention to so i hope that information helps you out now let's go to our next question this is coming in from the tiger's den and that was to take a look at uh, gdx so let's do that let's get over to our our uh our eight panel set of charts out here and let's get the gdx fired up and we'll get uh, goldilocks fired up as well but let's get the gdx first while that's happening i'm going to take a little swig here otherwise known as the technical term for h2o because the host has a, a dry mouth don't know what from but in any event, so as the GDX, uh, so here, the question that was posed, let me just first read the question. Hey, Steve, could you please cover gold and gold miners, GDX? Do you agree with other hosts that it looks like it's going lower? Do you see any support near Larry's 1776 level? So that's dealing with gold out there. Yeah, the 17 was for gold, not GDX, to be clear. Yeah, thanks. So uh, first, the GDX is uh, generating a buy signal as we speak right now. What's that buy signal? Today is the day following bar number nine. And this is, uh, so you can see here, you have a nice road momentum indicator top. A gap to the downside created that top out here on April 19th. And price is pulled where? It's pulled all the way back to its breakout level of 34.10. So how many folks said that 34.10 was a breakout level? Well, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that that was a breakout level until I pulled up the chart and had the TD9 count pattern. Again, one of those tools that I, that I teach subscribers out there. So uh, today's low is going to be key to answer your question. Myself and any other... Uh, a host out here, uh, well, I, I'll just have to speak for myself. So for myself, the only way that price is going to head lower, give you confirmation that price wants to head lower, which, by the way, in the GDX could be 29.94, is a close below today's low, whether that takes place tomorrow, the next day, or what have you. But otherwise, you have a valid TD nine count bottom pattern that is completing today. You have an oscillator and change line that had changed colors on uh, Friday, uh, between Friday and today. So you got a valid bottom. And, pa and price in the GDX should at least bounce up to that level. What is that level? That's at about 36.98. That's the top of the uh, daily profile out there. So no, with regard to the GDX, I don't show it going lower per se. In fact, I see it actually moving up to about 36.98. We'll take a look at Goldilocks when we get back from the spring. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go uh, take a look at uh, Goldilocks right now. I'm going to switch screens. We're going to go to our larger time frame formats out here, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, and uh, see what the uh, signals are. So on a daily time frame, what you're going to see is you're going to see an A to B equals CD pattern. The one-to-one -one price projection level would get us to 1812. Since the retracement was only a 57% retracement, Odds would favor this would do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the dime so downside. So the next price projection level is 1.272. Expansion would be 1760, below that 1695. So that's the range out there. But when we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, we can see that price is pulling back into a level of support. And that's its bullish structured weekly profile. And that's between the range of 1815 to 1845. Now, we haven't gotten down all the way to 1845. The low of the day so far is 1853. But that's close enough for my work, my work that says, okay, when you get down to any level of support, just start taking a look to see if there's any kind of signals on the shorter term time frames that support that decision. On a monthly basis, price is just testing the top of its profile out there. So we just began the month. It's really too early to say. Price is trading just slightly below that level, which is 1876.20. But we're at 1865 right now. So don't get too caught up or hung up into the monthly time frame chart. What I do want to suggest or share with you on the monthly time frame chart is that before price would get to 1776, you've got a rising trend line. These are nice trend lines out here, and I'm looking at the bottom left-hand uh, chart out there, and that's probably around the 18, um, you know, I'm going to say it's around the 1845 level, uh, 18, because that's the top of the weekly profile. And it's right in that range, so you can see this nice little rising trend line out here. And the center line being the trend line, the, the, the midpoint of those, we can see the last rally found resistance right at that level. So I don't think it's a, that's in the cards with certainty that price is going to complete this 1812, 1760 A to B equals CD to the downside out here. There's other levels of support. Now, when we switch over, we take a look at the intraday signals out here for gold. The only signal, actually, I don't even need to do that. We don't need to do that. I can just switch over and take a look at it this way. The only signal here would be on an intraday, give me a moment, would be this one coming from a 30 minute time frame chart. So, on a 30 minute time frame chart, if we take a look at the expansion of swing points, 
And here, swing points, nothing more than where price changes trend. So on a 30-minute uh, basis, that took place at 1.30 in the morning on April 28th at the low. Then the swing point high came in at 7.30 on April 29th. If we go from that low to that high, we take a look at a Fibonacci expansion. The 1.272 gets us to the 1857 level. And now price is just consolidated with inside its profile. So uh, from a short-term standpoint, what you're watching is the 1868 level. It did get two consecutive closes above that bar, and then it broke back inside there. So I'm not exactly sure how to interpret it. But the way to interpret it is let's still watch resistance and support. If price is going to head lower, well, price is going to have to close below the bottom of that 30-minute profile, and that's at the 1856 level. So that's why I'd be watching to the downside. And the upside, I'd be watching the 1868 from a short-term standpoint out there. But if you're asking me, do I find a plethora of signals to suggest that gold has a bottom the answer to that question at 1.45 in the afternoon is no, I do not. So I hope that helps answer your question. Another question that came up inside the Tiger's Den was a look at the advanced decline oscillator. And this is for Peter in Park City. So Peter in Park City, here's what we've got as we speak right now. We still have a slight divergence, slight divergence. So we have lower price that is taking place inside the New York Stock Exchange. When I say lower price, I'm not referring to the fact that it's trading lower today. I'm talking about trading below a prior swing point. That's in the upper right-hand corner where you're taking like a, that real red diagonal line. But at the same time, Peter, the advanced client oscillator has not made a lower low. Now, this is just after a couple of days' worth of trading. You can't have a divergence that takes hold in the short time period out here. But we really need to watch to see how the day plays out. In fact, what we really need to do, Peter, is understand what patterns are present, if any, inside the New York Stock Exchange. Because this is saying, okay, be careful. You have a divergence in place. You want to watch it. Um, so let's go switch over. So here's the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. As we speak at 146 in the afternoon, it has a small divergence. What I will do is I'll pull over the New York Stock Exchange chart here. If you give me a moment, we'll get to that. And we're just going to go see if there's any kind of bottom signal out here. So as we pull this over... What we're going to find, very much like the Russell 2000, first, the New York Stock Exchange is trading below its uh, February 24th swing point out there. It's a hammer candle. It was a TD9 count pattern, but typically say, you know, this is a big trouble to the downside. And that may be the signal. But today is bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says odds favor that by tomorrow you will have a confirmed TD9 count bottom, and on Wednesday you will have a completed TD9 count bottom. The problem is we don't know which low of that pattern, whether it's going to occur today, tomorrow, or on Wednesday out there. That's why we go from generate the signal uh, to confirm the pattern to complete the pattern out there. So that's kind of the, the lingo and the language out here. So you've got the, uh, a potential bottoming signal with a New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator divergent pattern out there. So it bears watching. Watching. Of course, that could easily get negated and be negated by the end of the day. And the way that that happens, uh, Peter, is you get a advanced client oscillating below minus 202.80. Right now, you're at uh, minus 208.54. So that's what I'd be watching there. I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. So let's see if there's any questions here that have come in by email. We have, looks like uh, just one. Been a quiet day. And this is from Eddie. And then he wants to take a look at his usual suspects, Apple and NVIDIA. So let's go do that. Uh, I think I'm on the black charts. Yeah. So let's stay with uh, with inside this for the moment. Let's take a look at Apple, APL. And I'll get that fired up. Oh, what did I do? Give me a moment here, folks. I don't told. Oh, wasn't there. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. Sorry about that. So let me. Uh, I really didn't want to screw up my entire set of charts out here. So I just want to get that New York Stock Exchange back in place. So in the case of Apple right now, so Apple formed a uh, Gartley buy pattern to buy the D point, and it did it with that Three River Morning Star pattern. Make sure we're on this. Yeah, okay. That's the daily time frame. So today, if Apple closed below the low of that pattern, which is at 155.38, we're trading at 154.09 right now, you close below that, that says we had to lower price. Well, lower price is testing the swing point out here. That's the swing point for March the 14th. And the high that swing point is 154.12. We are trading inside that right now. That swing has 108 million shares. We've done 75 today. So you could you could possibly negate the buy the D point, and yet you could reject that swing point that says if you can't bust them down, it's trying to gonna try to bust them to the upside. So the ideal setup here, Eddie, the ideal bullish setup is what you'd be looking for. The ideal bullish setup 
is we're testing that March 14th swing point, close back above it. That would be 166.29. If you can do that, then you are also back above the bottom of that profile. And that says you'll have a test rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. You will maintain the buy the D point pattern and support will have held. And that would suggest a, uh, a move higher out there. That's coming from the black background charts. If price does continue to move lower, it closes inside that swing point, even if it's on light volume. That would mean it closed today below 154.12, which is where we're trading right now. Then that even though it's on light volume, Price could easily go test the low of that, could blow away the low of that, but that low would be 150.10. So if you close today below 154.12, odds favor getting down to the low of that swing point. And that's really supported by the other profile levels that we're looking at out here. You're consolidating with inside the monthly. You're trading below the bottom of the weekly profile out there. So Eddie, that's our take on Apple. And we get back from this break, we'll close it out by taking a look at one of your favorites, NVDA. NVDA. We'll be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. here and you know eddie it's it's really bad news the bad news is that it wants a lower price out here you're trading below the brand new daily profile that's forming today now i don't know where it's going to close but certainly when i watch this number the number is uh, 187.28 we're trading at 186.16 so this formed on friday you're all you close below it on friday you get a second close below it that's not really what you want to see. You're already below the bottom of the weekly profile. You blew away the swing point, the B point of the A to B equals CD to the downside with volume. So you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside that would take us to 149.49. It's a 60% retracement. So, you know, it may find support there. It may get all the way down to the 111 
level, that would be the 1.272 expansion. Now, as bad as that is, and it is bad, there's one last bastion of hope for NVIDIA, and that's at 177.78, Eddie, and that is the uh, current profile on its monthly time frame. So if you get a close below 177.88, then more likely than not, these 149 levels, maybe even 111, are likely to come into uh, play for NVIDIA. So that's what I see when I take a look at its charts. There's nothing else on the white background charts, uh, so uh, no reason for me to uh, share that with you. So let's do this here. We've got about a minute left. Let me uh, take a quick peek at the 30-minute chart, see if they've got... Yeah, no, nothing there. I'll, I'll go ahead. Let me get those up on the screen for you. So change the window and uh, voila here we go so you're going to look at the four 30 minute equity future contracts out here and the ES mini the NQ they're all in so the ES mini and the YM are both in bar number six it says you could get a TD9 count pattern that would form out here in the next two oh that'd be by the close so that'd be by about four o'clock out here there are rose momentum indicator signals present so it's the NQ is the one that's holding up. The the one that still has a bottoming pattern out here is the NQ. Uh, but let's 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 do it. Let's say it like this: If we get a close below, I would say a close below uh, twelve seven forty two seventy five, that's going to suggest a, a further move lower out there. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me on uh, this uh, first day of May, and uh, stay tuned because you've got two more wonderful hours lined up for you. David White, your favorite polar bear. And after that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us home from three to four. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. I want you to have a magnificent Monday, folks. Take care. Thanks again for joining us.